Hey, what's up? I'm Jay Steele, and I'm here with the creators of Phineas and Ferb, Dan Poppemeyer and Jeff Swampy Marsh. Thanks for joining Absolutely. me, guys. Thank you so much. Hey, hey, good to be here. <laughs> so you guys are not only the creators, but you are voices of fan favorite characters. Dan, can you give me a little bit of the character you play? Well, I'm Dr. Heinz Doofenshmirtz from Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated. Perhaps you've heard of me. I have my own jingle. <laughs> and how about you, Swampy? Who do you play? Oh, Major Francis Monogram, the head of the OWCA, the organization without a cool acronym. Uh, Perry's boss and Carl's boss, too. We don't pay him, though, so. And, anyway. and it's really not a cool acronym. It, it's called <laughs> AUKA. AUKA. It sounds like a, like a car horn from the 1940s. Broke condition. <laughs> this is insanely awesome. Okay, so because you guys are voices and the creators, I thought it'd be fun to show you guys some impressions of your characters throughout the internet from TikTok to YouTube. So first, Excellent. we'll start with a monogram impression. Good evening, Agent P. <laughs> Evil Dr. Doofus Mertz is at it again. What exactly he is up to, we don't know. So whatever he is doing, put a stop to it, Agent P. <laughs> <laughs> the eyebrow and the mustache absolutely yes. made it for me. Right? Yes, it okay, totally in character. The visible I'm, I'm not it has the roundness of Swampy's deep mm. voice, but uh, but uh, the, he made up for it with the props. With the and props. The, and the eyebrow going up <laughs> in the bottom. The was wiggle at the cool. end was priceless. Yeah, Swampy, yeah. how did you find that voice yourself? How did you know you were going to be monogram? You know, when, when we were originally doing the little pilot, I, I wanted uh, Monogram to have that kind of uh, gravitas to be trusted. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I basically was spoofing Walter Cronkite. Two minutes until man begins the greatest adventure in his history. And that was the guy that I modeled it after. That's yeah. the way it was. This is Does it hurt your voice when you do it for so long in recording sessions or no? I am I can do about 45 minutes tops and then I'm okay. burnt. Dan can do Doofenshmirtz. Yeah, believe it or not, this all doesn't day hurt. Day I can do this all day long. What do you think of that one? What do you think of Sean here? <laughs> I, I just love the bonsai tree. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Sitting between, oh, between them for no reason. Yes, exactly. Uh, I, I, I think he, he got a lot of the personality of Doofenshmirtz, but, uh, but he hasn't lived a rough enough life yet to have the gravel in his voice. A few more but, years. Uh, but, <laughs> like the younger, like, gnome version of Doofenshmirtz, you would say that? I, th I always think that Doofenshmirtz always had that gravel yeah. in his voice, <laughs> even when he was young. From a tender age, my father decided that it would be me. We're here for Candace Against the Universe, the new Phineas and Ferb movie. Yes. And Dan, I looked into it, and I think you were destined to make a space movie because you, when you were younger in Mobile, Alabama, put a uh, black tarp on your wall, put spaceships up I on did. the ceiling, and filmed little space movies with a Super 8 camera. So I, that influence today with you making a space movie? Yeah, well, I mean, that, that stuff was just, you know, I, I was this little kid bursting with creativity, and that's all I ever really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Once I saw the movie Jaws and then Star Wars, I was like, that's all I want to do is make movies. I want to make uh, make entertainment in, in, in a visual form because I'd always drawn, but this this felt like something that I could, uh, uh, you know, I, it took it to this other dimension of 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 sound and and time and everything like that. And uh, and so yeah, no, I I made a made little Super Eight science fiction movies with uh, with black. Uh, black material over two whole walls of my mom's living room, you know, and the, my, you know, to their credit, my parents were very understanding about that and, that and even encouraging about that. My mom helped sew costumes and stuff like that. Yeah, I think I was destined to do this. And this is, I just got this off the wall. This is one oh. of my prized possessions. You can hard to see in the glare, but this is my autographed picture of Neil Armstrong. It was made wow. out to me. My grandfather got it for me. And this is still today one of one of my favorite 
things ever. I just thought those guys going up into space and walking on the moon was beyond cool. Yeah. So your grandfather inspired you for both music and space, right? Because your grandfather- Pretty much, yeah. My grandfather was a, a pretty inspiring guy. Um, I spent a long time trying not to be completely intimidated by him. And fortunately, uh, my career took off long you know, before, while he was still around to be able to, to give me some kudos for it. For those who don't know, Swampy's grandfather was Les Brown from Les Brown and his band of renown. He wrote Sentimental Journey. And uh, he, was, he was one of the big three, three probably biggest musicians in pop music for, for a long time. It was sort of like Tommy Dorsey, Glenn Miller, and Les Brown were the, were, were the rock stars of their, of their era. And speaking of music, in this new movie, obviously, the music is amazing, just like the show in the last movie. But I'm curious, I was looking at the credits, and there were so many awesome co-writers you guys had, like Kate Micucci, and I think... Uh, did you have someone from your band Keep Left, Dan, and who wrote with you as well? Uh, yeah, uh, Michael Colross, who, who yeah. also played Draco in uh, in Milo Murphy. It's my world and we're all living in it. Whenever I would write something with Michael, my my wife could always tell because she because there's sort of a certain specific thing of our se our sensibilities <laughs> getting together. She'd always go. Ooh, that sounds like a Keep Left song a little bit. <laughs> he was in on Squirrels in My Pants, I think, too. Uh, oh, yeah. Exactly. Step on over and watch me put it down. That's Michael. Step right over and watch me put it down. <laughs> How do you decide, like, who you're going to co-write with for which song? We have a giant hat full of names. Yeah. <laughs> we pick just, them out, and then we, we send them. a golden envelope. To <laughs> They've been chosen I love it. for this one-time opportunity. <laughs> yes. to How do you get into that name basket? How do I get my name? <laughs> I think everybody's name is actually in that basket. It's just everyone in the world. You know, basket. some of it oh. is people that we've always wanted to work with when, and we admire. We've had things like... Uh, Bobby Lopez actually sent an email to Dan at one point saying, you know, you don't know who I am, uh, but I'm a big fan of your stuff. And Dan had to write back saying, no, no, we know exactly who you are. Yeah. We're big fans. And yeah, he, he wrote uh, Avenue Q and Book oh, of yeah. Mormon and Let It Go. He wrote Frozen with his, his wife. He's an EGOT. He's got an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. Sometimes it's just the opportunity comes up. Other times we've sought people out, and other times, like literally the Disney Music Department has had calls saying, hey, we got a call. Would you like to work with so-and-so? Uh -huh. It happens every way you can imagine. Hello, is it me? Dr. Doofenshmirtz is up to his old tricks. He's ordered 100,000 bottles of water in the last hour. We had to figure out what he's up to and put a stop to it. He's got the tone and range there. Yes. The accent is slightly off, but he's down yeah. in the right register. Oh, okay. He's almost there then. Okay, cool. You know what he needs to do that, that I see Swampy do when he, when he does monogram is he lets his jowls get really low. Oh, yeah? It will blah, 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 like that. Gotta get there. Probably, probably jowls are very important to a proper <laughs> major monogram. The the doof wasn't bad at all though. That was pretty fun. Yeah, right? yeah. So this is actually a perfect transition to what I was gonna ask next. He mentioned water. Um I don't know if monogram is, but Swampy, I know that you're a surfer. A little bit, and yeah. I'm curious, because I've always heard with showrunners or directors, you're constantly just putting out fires, you're constantly answering questions yeah. to different people who are on your staff. Mm -hmm. It's so a bit it's, like uh, an, an episode of West Wing. Yes. <laughs> Just wandering around with people following you, asking you questions as you wander always. It's so is way. surfing kind of like an escape from that, like to calm your brain yeah. down? There, when you're out in the water, that really is all you can think about. You're out mm -hmm. watching, it, everything else goes away and it gets very quiet, which is a really nice break. Because most of the time, even if it's not the production, there's... I, I, I feel like I'm constantly being bombarded even with just creative thoughts. And there's something about that environment. And, and I also get that when I'm, I, I get to race cars from time to time. It's that same thing. When you're there, everything else goes away and your focus comes right down to where you are and what you're doing. And that is a wonderful moment. 
just to kind of have everything else melt away. So what we do is we send our production coordinator out to surf next to him and ask him questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be really oh, no. bad when that happens. Somebody paddles out, hey, Swampy. <laughs> Between waves, got a couple of quick questions for you. Ah, behold, Barry the Platypus, my new TikTok creator, Enator. All my videos will be seen across the entire tri-state area. Yes, okay, that's yeah. pretty good. It, it, it is good. I actually did a TikTok back to him yeah. where I'm, I'm listening to it on the phone, and I was like, well, I would say that, but now it would just be redundant. <laughs> because <laughs> that, I would sound just like that. He's, he's actually very, that, very that, close. That's a pretty good one. And, Dan, uh, you've been killing it on TikTok. What got you onto the platform in the first place? Well, I have uh, a 12 year old and a 15 year old daughter. So, <laughs> so that's really what does it. I'll even sing a song. Shotties like a melody. It was fun to sort of suddenly realize, oh, this fan base is still really pretty rabid. Oh, yeah. I just have been in the wrong place. And, uh, and so it's become so much fun to just make little movies you know, almost every day I'm making a TikTok and editing it and, and just having having fun. And it's really helped me sort of get through quarantine <laughs> in a way that made me feel like I was contributing to society. That's awesome. And speaking of like a huge rabbit fan base for Phineas and Ferb, there are tons of celebrities that are huge fans of Phineas and Ferb. Like even recently, I think Lil Nas X tweeted about a Phineas and Ferb Blu-ray, like sending out to his fans. Yeah. Or um, PewDiePie has been live streaming himself watching what Phineas and Ferb. That? You guys yeah. hear about that? Yeah, I, <laughs> I've heard about this. I haven't. I have. I don't actually. I, I feel bad because I don't actually know who PewDiePie is. But people talk about oh, him. He well, he's the number one. My subscriber. my son is now nineteen, so I yeah. have heard who PewDiePie. Is. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. I need to I need to go look him up and see what see what the fuss is about about because people are really excited that he's yeah. watching Phineas and Ferb. So. The way it happened was so he saw some meme about Phineas and Ferb and he didn't understand it and then his fans got kind of mad at him like you gotta watch Phineas and Ferb what's wrong with you? Phineas and Herb memes trigger Renator. I don't understand your memes. Flix doesn't know anything about Phineas and Ferb. He doesn't understand why these images can make us nine-year-olds so uncomfortable. I guess I have to watch this now. So he's like watched, I think, seasons one through two or three already. Like oh, excellent. Times. Yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah. And does he, does he live stream him watching it? Yeah, and just okay. basically just watches it and goes, ha ha, laughs at it. And <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Okay, yeah. well, uh, that's uh, that's an excuse for me to watch it then. Yeah, there you go. Songstar was nice. Some people call it warmer. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a chance to see the movie. Actually, I saw the movie three times now. It's that oh, good. Excellent. Everyone needs to go watch it. Excellent. So I'm. I think I've, three times is the right right amount of times. I think I need more. I'll, I'll, I think yeah, more. I think more. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's go so, four, maybe even five. I had to watch it 50 times, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I had a specific question about the movie. I'm going to keep it spoiler free. But okay. in the, in it's alluded in the trailer where Phineas and Ferb have a gift they're going to give to Candace. Yes. And the reveal of what that is is so satisfying and emotional, not just for anyone who's watching the movie, but especially for fans who've been watching the whole show because it's almost like a culmination of the series yeah so i'm curious when you guys were writing it was that the first gift you thought of when you were going through it were there other ideas or how'd you land on that one specifically um we thought of a tie just a nice <laughs> tie you know but then that's really such a father's day kind of thing oh, oh yes of course so no it, it, we we just wanted it to be something that uh, that would would solve the story problem like uh, you know I, I i think it's really what i like yeah i'm not good yeah do you guys mind if i ask doof and monogram a question really quick sure now that phineas and ferb and Candace against the universe their home is now disney plus i was wondering what you guys thought of the disney plus original series like monogram i know muppets now is on there so like would any of these muppets fit into the owca and Doof, I know uh, Hamilton is on there, and I was surprised not to see you in it because you dance, sing, rap, all the above. So what do you guys? I'm think? wondering why I was not in Hamilton because I think I would have I would have made a good, pretty much anybody, but I think the king. I think King George. 
You know, I, 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 I could have slayed that, but they just I would agree called. with that. I think of all the characters in that production, Doofenshmirtz definitely is mostly like the king. <laughs> yes. Okay, yes. It's the I threatening aspects of that song that, uh, you know. <laughs> there have been some discussions about expanding the Auka uh, to include uh, potential Muppet-like individuals, although nothing is confirmed yet, and even if it was, I wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> well, that's well, you that's put a fedora on them, and, and, and it works. That always helps. It's why Fozzie, oops, I've said too much. Oh, oh, oops. I can edit this out. <laughs> well, Doof, Monogram, thanks so much for joining me, and Dan and Swampy, thank you guys so much for taking the time to talk. I love the movie, and everyone who's watching right now should definitely check it out. Thanks, Jace. Thanks very much, Jace. How does a duck-billed beaver-tailed mammal always wearing a fedora thwart all of my schemes with such a plum and with persistence consistently reduces my net gain to zero? Who is this teal-colored hero? I think I'm really glad you came. What's your name, man? Perry the Platypus. <laughs> <laughs>